Hey Lou, it's me. Uh, again, I guess. By now you probably already know this is me. But uh, hey, hey. Um, so the video I open this with is not where I am right now. Um, that's where I was uh, two days ago. Uh, yeah, yeah, yesterday and the day before. Uh, yesterday was my birthday, which was pretty cool. Uh, the whole weekend was amazing because uh, my, my sister had rented a, uh, a place in uh, Switzerland um, because the confinement rules got all crazy and she was like, you know, I'm just going to go to Switzerland and work. So she decided to do that, which was cool. And then she invited me and my man to Switzerland with her. And so we went on Friday. Um, holy fuck yeah yeah um so we were in the alps uh i got to the very top of the mountains called peace uh, peace gloria peace is uh called Manche, which is a really small not very um much spoken language um that's kind of italian-ish um but it's mostly spoken in northern italy parts of uh switzerland uh it means peak so the you know, Gloria Peak, as it were. Um, oh, it was amazing. Um, what was kind of kind of wild was uh, to get up there. You have to take gondolas. Um, it's not actually possible to get up there by hiking, and it probably would have taken a long time because it was nine thousand feet above sea level. Um, and I am terrified of heights. I'm okay when I'm on a ledge and I can look down. I'm like, okay, that was pretty intense. And then I'll back up a little bit. But when you're on a machine um, that is being suspended by cables um, and there's no ground underneath you, I got a little... Have you ever seen a cat who doesn't want to be picked up and you pick up the cat and the cat's like, ah, oh! and it doesn't want to be there? Uh, that's like me. Um, so that was pretty intense. I'm glad I did it. Really glad I did it. Um, yeah, so that was my birthday. Um, I'm 44 now, which, yeah, that's cool. Uh, I, I, yeah, um, so instead of being on top of a mountain, I'm, I'm back, uh, back home. Uh, I'm next to a frozen lake. I don't know if you can see it a little bit. Uh, yep, frozen lake uh, next to a little waterfall. And, uh, a thing I wanted to talk about this time, um, it's cold by the way, if I kind of keep shaking, that's that's why. Uh, I have a jacket, the jacket's all like big, so. Um, yeah, what I wanted to talk about a little bit was this thing that like in, in the United States where I grew up, um, you know, like especially for someone who isn't indigenous, you know, you have all of these kind of memories and ideas not memories i'm sorry ideas like things you read or whatever about like what europe is like especially about what it might have been like for your ancestors um and you know of course it's always been something i'm really super interested in um switzerland was never really a, a place i thought like oh one day i'll go there um and you know instead it was just oh yeah that's where the alps are and then of course from American media, particularly, you have this idea that the uh, um, that Switzerland and the Alps is, you know, one. It's this extraordinarily rich place where everybody hides their money, uh, which that happens. Um, but uh, and then two, really rich people uh, go there on ski vacations, and you know, and that, that also happens as well. But it's also just the land like any other lands uh, it's a really intense land but you know amongst all of the the hype the media portrayals most of which is kind of tr the tourism industry um you know switzerland has a bunch of farms with cows uh you know swiss cheese you've had swiss cheese swiss cheese in europe by the way is called emmental uh which is the name of the swiss call the cheese that they make um so 
Yeah, so there was emmental there. I had some emmental, but you can get it anywhere. So, so that was that was one thing that, you know, I mean, I've been in Europe now four years, is about four or five, and you know, I've had all these ideas about what Europe was like kind of disappear once I was here. Um, you know, one of the first things that fell away was the idea that Paris was this like crazy, oh, you know, I was like, eh, Paris is okay. It's just a really big city. It's kind of like New York, just with cooler, older buildings. Um, you know, in other places as well, that kind of overlay of myth, which is kind of a false myth. I mean, you know, and I say false myth because there are true myths. Um, you know, all of that kind of fades away, but the moment I got to Switzerland, I, I really realized, wow, oh, some of this stuff is still there. Now, the other fun thing that I was, uh, the reason why I was going to talk about like kind of ancestors and stuff was, uh, I had, I had never realized this. I, I've tried multiple times to figure out where, uh, my ancestors came from. I know some of them come from England, some of them come from Wales. Uh, I've always known too that some of them were, well, a lot of them are Germanic, uh, German, you know, as it were. Um, but I went through uh, this area called Baden-Württemberg. Um, I think I said that right. Um, which is where the Swabish live. Um, Swabish, um, Suebis uh, in Latin, um, they were a... Uh, uh, they were a Celtic Germanic people. Um, they kind of had their own culture or whatever. And um, a part of them were in uh, in Switzerland, but Switzerland was also the, the Helvetii, um, which is why Switzerland is called the Confederatio Helvetica or whatever. Um, the Helvetic Federation or Confederation, because that's, you know, all of the the... Celtic tribes that were there, the Helvetii, um, are still there. Anyway, I'm, I'm digressing a little bit, but the, um, there was the Alemanni, um, who were also kind of part of Switzerland, and then sort of where um, uh, where Strasbourg is in France, uh, which is why they speak Ale Alemannisch, uh, which is kind of German. Um, but different, a bit like Luxembourgish is kind of like German, but different as well. Um, and then there's a Suebi, um, Swedish. Um, and, uh, <laughs> anyway, so I had known about them and, uh, I remember somebody once told me, oh yeah, 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 Wildermuth, they come from, uh, Stuttgart, they're all in Stuttgart. And I was like, oh, okay. I mean, I'd never been near Stuttgart, but sort of like driving through that whole area. Um... And there are wilderness everywhere. I did a search, and yeah, that's that's where that's where um, we're from. Or one part of my ancestral tree is from. Um, so basically, right at the foot of the Alps, uh, right before the Alps become the Swiss Alps instead of the German Alps. And so that oh, there's somebody jogging. Are they going to jog by me? No, they're jogging the other way. Okay, thank you. Uh, anyway, sorry. Um, it's really fascinating to to look around at all of these place names and realize that, you know, unlike in the United States where, you know, you go somewhere and it's called Harrisburg, which is Harris's town, so some dude named Harris founded it or was the governor of it. Um, we have something similar here. Um, oh, okay, so for instance, in um, France, Luxembourg, and parts of Germany, um, you'll see uh, you'll see towns naming and named or ending in Ingen or Ange um, or if you, or Ing, you know, and those all mean um, of or um, derived of or you know and uh, descendants of. So um, a good example. Uh, you know, there's there's a town here called uh, Dommeldange. Uh, it's the ancestors of Dommel. Uh, Dommel being one of the um, Germanic peoples, or the, the names of a, of, of a Germanic person, uh, a German, basically, who settled there. And 
then his descendants lived there, etc. Basically a homestead, as it were. Um, but, and then too, you know, I've mentioned a lot of the, the place, place names here have, have Latin roots. Um, very close by to here is uh, several towns that all bear the same ending, which is the old name of the Roman settlement that was here that replaced a Celtic settlement. All of this is just that the history of peoples is screaming at you from the land, from the names. Um, and then you can go to places and you see ruins that are 2,000 years old. Um, and then also you see towns that, are, that were villages, that were homesteads before, that have been around for 3,000 years old, where people have always, always lived there. Um, and oh, one, it's really cool, first of all, to kind of get a sense of, oh, this is where I was from, like over there. Um, and two, oh, airplane, sorry. That airplane is coming from an old uh, Roman settlement um, that is now called something else. But the, the town where the airplane airport is, it used to be a Roman settlement. It's pretty cool. Um, but the Romans didn't have airplanes. I'm kind of babbling because it's cold. And also I'm still trying to work this all out in my head. Because something happens when I was there that I don't really understand. It was really profound. When I slept, I dreamt. But the dreams that I had, I knew were at a lower level. Hmm, lower. I, not lower as in like, you know, not as cool. Like, you know, something high is cool and lower. No. Um, deeper. Um, you know, the French word profond, uh, which we use in English, profound, really just means deep. And I felt like I was dreaming on some really deep level or some really deep cavernous thing where I'm still trying to unlock or translate or comprehend what was said um, and what I saw. And that's an intense experience. And the best I can do right now is tell you that it has something to do with ancestors and that has something to do with the way things continue here and keep continuing I don't know if that makes sense hopefully in another video I'll have more sense to it um, or I will write about it at some point um, but I hope you're all well and uh, you know, I got birthday wishes from some of you all. Thank you so much. And for those who didn't send happy birthday, don't worry about it. It's okay. Birthdays happy happen every year. And yeah. Anyway, if you ever get a chance to go to Switzerland, um, one, it's not as expensive as everyone tells you. I mean, it's pretty expensive once you're there, but you don't, you don't, you don't have to do any of these things expensively. Um, you know can do things really cheap technically I could have just taken a bus there um, that would have been a really cheap bus just a very long bus ride um, and and two well there's no two no but I hope you're all well um, I'll try to be more coherent next time and warmer because uh, spring is supposedly here even though everything's frozen and I'm cold so I'm gonna let you go but uh I love you all. Thank you, as always, for all of your support. I deeply appreciate it. And uh, I have some really cool things coming up very soon, which I'll tell you on my Patreon. And yeah. All right. Bye.